What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guy. We're going to be looking at some of the top five questions that will come up in the 2025 SATs. So, brace yourselves, let's go. Okay, question one, and this is becoming a really common question in SATs these days. It's this missing value multiplication or addition or any type of operation, but we have missing values and gaps in the question and the answer. So how are we going to solve a question like this? It says, write the three missing digits to make this multiplication correct. So we have our answer down here. We know it's going to be 700 and something with a two in the ones column. And we have our question up here, three multiplied by something on this top row. So my question would actually be something five, something multiplied by three equals 700 and something two. So I'm looking for these three missing values. So if I just try and solve this as I would do, which would be to multiply my ones together, I'd get three multiply by this one here. And I know it has to equal something with a two in the ones place. So let's have a look. If I do three multiplied by one, I'm only going to end up with three. Three multiplied by two is six. Three multiplied by three is nine. 3 multiplied by 4 equals 12. And look what I can see, a 2 in the 1's column. Now what I should do is carry on and make sure there's no other 2 in the 1's column for any of the other answers for the 3 times table. I know there's not, so therefore 3 times 4 equals 12, and I think 4 must go in that box just here. Now what I must remember at this point is that I had 3 times 4 is 12, but don't forget, 12 has a 10 as well as the two ones. So I'm going to make sure I put this one up here, ready to add to my next answer for this little box just there. So my next part says three times five. Three times five is 15, but don't forget my one is 16. So that's carrying another one across and putting a six in my answer column. And then the next one is three times something equals seven. But actually, it's not 7 because I'm going to be adding a 1 to it. So it's actually going to be 3 times something equals 6. And 3 times 2 equals 6. So I'll add my 2 in here. 3 times 2 is 6. And my 1 equals 7. So I think the question should have been 254 times 3 equals 762. Not too easy, but definitely doable. Question 2 says a box holds 40 packets of envelopes. Each packet holds 25 envelopes. How many envelopes does the box hold? So we have a classic multiplication question here. So let's think of it. We have a box holds 40 packets of envelopes. And each packet, and then each packet holds 25 envelopes. How many does the box hold all together? So what I'm basically saying is I have a box with 40 packets, and in each packet I have 25 envelopes. So how many envelopes do I have all together? Well, I'm gonna to have to multiply my packets by how many I can fit in my box. So if I get 25 and I multiply it by my 40, I'm gonna end up with how many envelopes I have. What method could I use to solve this? I could use grid method or column method. I'm gonna use column method, here we go. 25 multiplied by 40. I've got 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, and then my next row is 4 times 5, but it's not a 4, it's a 40, so I can show that by putting my 0, 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 2 is 8, plus my 2 is 10, so I have 1,000, add to nothing, so my answer should be 1,000. There we go, simple. All I had to understand is that if a box holds 40 packets, and in each packet there's 25 envelopes. I have to multiply them together to get my total amount of envelopes. Question three, write a whole number in each box to make these statements correct. One has been done for you. 18, round as the nearest 10, is 20. But in this case, 18 is not the only answer, and that's really important to understand. I could have had 16, 17, 18, or even 19 because either of those numbers, round is the nearest 10, is 20. So question two that says round is the nearest 1,000 is 4,000. I could pick any number that when rounded to the nearest 1,000 equals 4,000. 
So I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm going to say 4,001. But I could have picked anything all the way from 3,501 all the way to 4,499. Any number between here would have been perfect for that answer because all I have to remember is when rounding, I look at the, at the value I'm rounding to, which in this case is 1,000, so I'm looking in the thousands column, and I just look next door to see if I'm gonna round up or down, but in this case I have a five, and the rule is five, six, seven, eight, nine, I round up, and zero, one, two, three, and four, I round down. So I have five, so I'm rounding up, and 3,000 rounded up would give me 4,000, and the same, for these ones here or anything in between. So rounded to the nearest 10,000 is 820,000. So I'm looking at the 10,000 column, which is this two. So I will need to make sure that when it's rounded, it's gonna to round to a two. So I could have anything between 815,000 all the way to 824,999. So I'm just gonna pick a nice easy one and do 820. 1,000 and leave it at that. Simple. Okay, now we have a really tricky little question that started to come up in the SATs in the last few years. We have a question like this where we have a simple question, 9,171 to subtract 530, but they put it on the wrong side of the equal sign to what we're used to looking at. So what's important to know is that this does not mean equals, this means balanced. Whatever's on this side is balanced with whatever is on this side. They have the same value. So it doesn't matter that the equal sign is there and my question's on the right hand side. We're just gonna solve it just like we would do normally and put my answer at the start. So I'm gonna use column subtraction, 9,171, subtract 530, put my titles on, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, make sure I don't make any mistakes. One subtract zero is one, seven subtract three is four, one subtract five I can't do so I borrow, 11 subtract 5 is 6, and 8 on its own leaves me 8. So my answer should be 8,641. Don't be confused that the answer is at the start. And last but not least, the numbers in this sequence increase by the same amount each time. Write the missing numbers. Well, this is a sequencing question, and sequencing questions are always in the SAT. So let's go. And we have two together here, so I know that I can find the gap between them, which is 6. So that means that all the gaps are 6. So now I can just simply use that knowledge to help me and get seven plus six is 13. Check that by adding six and getting 19, that's correct. And going backwards this time, one subtract six is minus five, subtract another six would be minus 11, so I know that's correct. Simple, use the knowledge we have, which is these two numbers together, to get the original gap between them and then just carry on. Simple. And there we have it. That is five of the most common questions that will come up in the year six, 2025 SATS paper. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, think about joining us over at themathshelter.com. But for now, see you in another video. Peace out.